Today's video is sponsored by Storyblocks. Storyblocks exists to help bring all your stories to life without sacrificing your vision due to time, budget, or resources. Every creator should have a Storyblocks membership. You can stay on budget while telling the best version of your story with the most affordable subscription plans and tools on the market that scale to meet your needs. With their unlimited all-access plan, you have unlimited downloads of everything in their library. You can try out multiple options quickly and find the perfect fit so you can create more and spend less without sacrificing quality. Assets are all royalty free so you can use your downloaded content anywhere for commercial or personal use. If you want to try Storyblocks out, you can do so using the link in the description. Thanks again to Storyblocks for sponsoring this video and now let's jump into it. Well, first of all, before we jump into this video, uh, yeah, I'm in a different office again. I'm still in the same office building, but one of the guys I share the space with, we decided to kind of swap rooms. So I'm not complaining though, because there is tons of natural light in this room. And then the other room that's kind of connected to it in a weird way has like sort of a lounge kind of feel to it. But I've got my desk in here, tons of natural light. Uh, I'm really, really happy with it, but we'll talk more about that in another video. I'll do a whole office tour, uh, but today what I want to talk about is sort of my desert island kit. This is my gear that I would bring with me anywhere I go. It's the gear I, I do bring with me everywhere I go so that no matter what I come across, I have what I need to make photos that I want. It's just for personal work. This isn't the same kit that I would bring to a commercial job or to a wedding or anything like that. But if I'm going for a drive, if I'm running errands, if I'm going to spend time with friends, I just throw this Pelican case in the truck with me. So no matter what I run into, I have everything I could possibly need. It's really more than I need, but it all fits in a pretty small Pelican case. So it's just my go everywhere kit. So this is what's in my bag for 2021 or what's in my case for 2021. Okay, first things first, the case itself, it's the Pelican 1485 Air, and this is gonna hold everything I would possibly need to just take my camera and take my equipment with me wherever I go, so that if I ever come across anything I wanna shoot, everything fits in this one case. I also have the 1510, which is a bigger case. I did a video a few weeks back, uh, kind of just talking about essential things that can kind of grow with you, and the Pelican cases were one of those things I mentioned. Uh, yeah, just can't recommend these things enough. Now, inside the case, I have uh, the Trek Pack divider system. So there are a number of different ways that you can pack your gear in a Pelican case. They have like the pluck and pull or whatever, the little foam inserts that you can kind of uh, basically configure to fit pretty much any gear that you have. Uh, they also have sort of the kind of typical yellow divider system where it's the little Velcro inserts that you can move around. Trek Pack is a little different where you have essentially these sheets of this material and and after you kind of figure out how you're gonna lay everything out inside the case, then you actually cut the little sheets and uh, kind of configure it yourself. And then it has these little pins with these little pull tabs and those just kind of keep everything uh, held together and you know, nice and tight. It's a little more expensive and I held off on trying out the Trek Pack system for a long time, but after buying it maybe a few months ago, I'm really, really glad I did. So uh, if you've ever been curious about the Trek Pack system and you're not sure if you wanna like spend the extra money on it um, or how well it works and how well it keeps everything safe I really really recommend it so uh, any pelican case I have from here on out will always have trek pack in it but let's talk about some of the stuff in here inside the case um, number one I'm sure it's no surprise, my M6, this thing goes with me absolutely everywhere uh, it's been my go-to kind of daily carry camera for how long has it been? almost eight years now uh, which is kind of wild I've used this one camera more than I've used any other single camera that I've owned over the years. So uh, this is a special one for me. Uh, the 35 millimeter Summicron, it's sort of my go-to lens on the M6, but I also have in here the 50 millimeter Summicron as well. Uh, 35 and 50 are kind of my two main focal lengths I like to use, especially on the M6. So uh, those are always there and obviously just, you know, they're pretty small in size, so it doesn't take up that much space in the case itself. And the nice thing is I also have this little adapter. This is a Leica M to Leica L adapter, so I can actually adapt my 50 and my 35 Summicrons onto my Leica SL2, which is right here. This has become uh, 
really one of my favorite cameras of all time. I made a video about it not that long ago, um, specifically adapting the 50 millimeter Summicron to it. Um, it's just a really, really great camera. I've really enjoyed using it. I use it for both personal work and professional work as well. Uh, anything from commercial work to weddings, that sort of thing. Um, it's just a workhorse. It's been reliable and it's just a really enjoyable camera to use as well. The current project that I've been working on um, sort of around home and family, um, I've been using this for everything there and it's different for me to be shooting a project like that without my M6. That's kind of what I've always used as just sort of my personal camera. Um, but I really wanted to uh, kind of just open up the possibilities with this camera a little bit and that's been a lot of fun. Um, I haven't really shared much from that project or really about that project, but I've been using this for all of that and I'm really, really glad I am. Now, as for the lens on the SL2 itself, um, I actually have a new lens here. This is the brand new 24 to 70 from Leica. This is their new L mount 24 to 70. Um, they previously, I think they launched the SL line with the 24 to 90, but this is your typical 24 to 70 F 2.8 lens. And it's really, really great. This is basically a loaner that Leica USA sent out to me to try out and review, which Thank you Leica for that um, as always, but as soon as it arrived and I threw it on the camera and I just started shooting with it, I immediately contacted them and I was like, yeah, just send me an invoice. I'm, I'm not gonna wanna return this one. I'm just gonna go ahead and buy it. It's a really, really great lens and using a 24 to 70 for anything outside of professional work is something I've never really thought about doing. Um, I was using the Panasonic Lumix uh, S Pro 24 to 70, which is what I'm using on my SL2S right now to record this video. Um, I would occasionally shoot some photos with that, you know, personal work and using a 24 to 70 for me has been odd because I've always been a prime lens shooter. The benefit of the faster aperture if I'm shooting inside and also just sort of that discipline of sticking to one focal length and really learning it. That's something I've really been a fan of for as long as I can remember. But I feel like a lot of times with prime lenses with that faster aperture, I would find myself just shooting wide open more than I would actually need to. Um, kind of using it as a crutch to just blur things out in the background. Uh, it, that has its advantages and has its place for sure, but I've been shooting a lot more at f5.6, f8, things like that, and really trying to include a lot more of the details in the scene, especially for the current project I'm shooting. And uh, having something like this, f2.8 is still plenty fast, so if I really need to blur things out, 2.8, especially as I go to 50, as I go to 50 or 70 millimeters, that's definitely gonna be able to blur the background out plenty enough for most daily use. And again, that's what this kit is for. This is not my kit to go shoot weddings or go shoot commercial work. This is just stuff for me to shoot my personal photos that I would come across on any given day. And if I feel like shooting 35, I simply just set it to 35 and I don't worry about zooming in and out and set it to 50 if I wanna shoot with that. Um, still trying to keep that same kind of prime lens discipline, but having the benefits of having one lens on my camera I don't have to worry about swapping lenses or packing extra lenses. Uh, yeah, very, very versatile. I think I'm going to make a video kind of uh, about shooting with a zoom lens for, you know, an extended period of time after only using prime lenses for so long. So if you want to see a video like that, let me know. Now, in case I come across any situations where I want to control the light a little bit more, I've got my Westcott FJ80. This is a speed light, and I also have this FJ... X2M uh, from Westcott, their little trigger. I've been using this on the FJ400, which is a full-size strobe that I've really, really been enjoying over the last at least year now. Um, but the FJ80, I recently got this from Westcott and I've been using this a lot in different situations, whether it's throwing the flash on top of the camera directly at my subject, if I wanna bounce it or anything, it obviously rotates and spins around. Um, there's also some like little attachments here. It uses this little magnet system. So I've got, uh, you know, a grid, I've got little gels, stuff like this that I can just throw onto the front of the speed light itself, which gives me just a little bit more control. And again, having something small and compact, it's not gonna be the main light to use for any given situation, but for most things, I should be able to get by with just this one speed light if I need to control the light at all. Speaking of controlling the light, the Leica SF20, this is a flash I use on my M6. Um, it communicates with the M6 in TTL mode, so I can basically just throw this on the M6, set it to TTL, and then just essentially point and shoot for 
from there. Um, really, really simple. I don't use it for a lot of things, but when I wanna have just a little bit of flash to either fill in the shadows or if I want that direct flash look, this has always worked great for me. I've owned a couple over the years, but yeah, if you have an M6 TTL, an SF20 is a nice thing to have just in the odd chances that you do need to use a flash. And of course, battery and charger for the SL2. So I've got two batteries at all times, even though these batteries are pretty beefy and they last a pretty long time. Um, I've always got a spare with the charger itself. Um, I've, get, I've gotten a lot of questions about this little thing right here. Uh, normally these chargers come with a long cable, but it uses just that typical little figure eight kind of connector. And I just bought this little right angle adapter. So that way I don't have to worry about a long cable. When I need to charge this, I can just leave this on there and plug it in and it will just you know sit right there on the wall. A lot more compact, a lot less messy. So uh, yeah, if you want to know about these, because I've had people ask where I got it and if it came with my SL2 and stuff like that. It's like a cheap little adapter that I got off of Amazon. I'll put a link down below. And then of course, uh, you know, just the other regular stuff. I've got this little foot right here with a cold shoe on it. So that way, if I wanted to set my speed light up on the table or set it up somewhere or use the quarter 20 mount on the bottom of it, if I wanted to throw it on the light stand, um, I can do that. Pelican case with my extra SD cards and then plenty of rolls of Ilford HP5. That's really the only film that I shoot. Uh, I was gonna say really the only film I shoot in my M6, but um, that's my one you know film camera that I'm using these days. So it's really the only film I'm shooting period. Um, I've decided to just stick to black and white if I want to shoot film and if I want to shoot color, I'm just going to stick to shooting digital because uh, I really, really enjoy the sensor in the SL2. And my favorite film ever is Ilford HP5 and it does everything I want when I want to shoot film. So keeping it simple, keeping it pretty consistent. Obviously this is more than enough gear for really anything I might come across. Um, it's definitely more than what I use on most days. Uh, most days I'm just grabbing the SL2 and the 24 to 70 and just natural light or the M6 with a 35 and some HP5 and natural light. Um, but the whole idea of this case again is to make sure no matter what kind of situation I might run into, I've got everything I need in this one case. I'm not gonna be thinking, oh man, I should have packed this or I should have grabbed that camera and used a different bag to carry everything. This holds everything I possibly need. And if I can't make a photo that I wanna make, uh, whether it be a random thing I come across on a back road or if I run into a friend and I wanna shoot a portrait of them, I have everything I could possibly need in this one case. and. Yeah, if I can't do it with what I have in this case, then I probably shouldn't consider myself a photographer or at least a professional photographer who does it for a living. So it's just the gear that I really enjoy using. It's gear that's reliable and it's gear that makes me want to shoot. Um, I've bounced around to a million different cameras and lenses and formats over the years. Um, keeping everything simple in this one small Pelican case has really helped me focus on actually working on a project, working on photos that I really want to make and not really considering, you know, maybe I should try this, maybe I should try that. Um, it's just helped keep me focused. And again, keeping it all in this one case, it just gives me peace of mind. One more thing I do want to mention that I kind of just take everywhere with me, although it doesn't live in this case, it could fit if I took some stuff out, uh, which is still just kind of blows my mind. But I just keep it in my truck. I take it with me everywhere I go. This is the Peak Design carbon fiber tripod, and I am not really a tripod person. I've never really enjoyed using tripods, and I've never felt like I was a photographer that needed a tripod. Uh, unless I'm doing some sort of really long exposure, which I don't do that often, or uh, self-portraits or a self-timer kind of situation, which again, I don't really do that often. Um, I've just never really felt the need to have a tripod, but I've been trying to just experiment a little bit and see what it would be like if I did work a little bit of a slower pace, keep the camera on the tripod and try and shoot anything I might come across with a tripod. And uh, it's been an interesting experiment for sure. And um, I wanted to get a tripod that I really liked using and this tripod is absolutely insane. It's crazy compact, it has a ball head, it has all kinds of different like little tricks and features. I mean, Peak Design, they are insane at engineering stuff like this. Uh, it's just a really, really enjoyable tripod to use. It's incredibly sturdy. It 
comes down to just a really small size so no excuses it can go with you pretty much anywhere and uh yeah i've actually been wanting to use a tripod for the first time ever so uh yeah peak design travel tripod um if you want to see more about this tripod let me know but there are already tons of videos out there i just figured i'd mention it because uh if this is sort of my take everywhere desert island kit you know the one kit that no matter what i'm doing i have what i need um the tripod just kind of goes along with that i hope you guys enjoyed this video again if you have any questions about any of the gear that i mentioned just let me know in the comments and i'll answer anything i can but that's it for today love you guys i'll see you next time